Well, thanks for hanging out with me this morning, Colorado. Well, this year, the Denver Film Festival is really thinking outside the screen with their immersive and virtual reality experiences. Well, this will allow audiences to be transported to new worlds and new ways of thinking. Here's my chat with this year's program coordinator. Well, the 44th Denver Film Festival is still going on, and there's a really cool part of it that you don't want to miss, and that is the virtual reality and shorts program. Landon, you are one of the masterminds kind of behind all this. How are you today? Uh, very well. Thank you so much for, uh, for having me uh, and for calling me a mastermind. Really appreciate that. <laughs> yes. Well, listen, I know there is a lot of work that goes into this, so what are you most excited for? Yeah, uh, absolutely. There is uh, an incredible piece of programming within the larger Denver Film Festival programming that is fairly new, only about uh, four or five years old. Uh, that's essentially our virtual reality and immersive program. And it allows us to take pieces from all around the world, from major festivals all around the world, um, at the forefront of kind of technology and narrative storytelling uh, within virtual reality and immersive theatrical production and bring them to Denver audiences, either remotely, live, site specific. Like there's all kinds of different, incredible, innovative and unique work uh, that you will only have an opportunity to see uh, if you check them out and explore uh, kind of this deep dive into the Denver uh, film program. So I highly, highly recommend this virtual reality and immersive theater uh, segment of the larger festival. I would imagine that this is so exciting to see what is possible out there. And, and again, this is something that you've kind of been doing. Okay, with the Denver Film Festival, how long have they been bringing virtual reality and immersive programming? Well, we've been talking about it for a while, but our first official year with a with a VR track and a single immersive theater piece was 2017. And then we've been doing it and expanding it ever since. Uh, last year, we took uh, the year off during the virtual fest of uh, immersive pieces. So we are really back with a bang this year with kind of more in-person uh, safety-led projects than we've ever had before. This is one of those creative elements that is just so stunning to see. This year's lineup, and for people saying, oh my gosh, I have to go to this, what can they expect? Sure. Well, right uh, housed in uh, uh, the Festival Annex, which is the McNichols building uh, at the Civic Center, the uh, is 12... Uh, timed virtual reality pieces as well as a physical installation and a couple of our immersive theater shows. Um, and so there are a combination of free and paid slots there. And you can see award winners from the Tribeca Film Festival, the Venice Film Festival, from Sundance, from South by Southwest, a few brand new pieces. Um, and those will be anything from your standard virtual reality segment to um, uh, to kind of interact with 360 videos, to things that have more audience agency. Um, they're all fairly short, um, and you can knock them out in one or a couple of long sessions, and they're, they're just a really beautiful new way of experiencing short film and storytelling, uh, as well as documentary and participatory documentary. In addition to that, we have these incredible uh, pieces, some remotely, if you're lucky enough to grab a slot to something called the Telelibrary or each and every. Uh, those are pieces for one person at a time that you can do by phone. Um, and I would check our website to see if there are any slots left. But there are two one night only pieces that are closing out our festival that that, in my opinion, are unmissable. Uh, the first is an in-person piece at the McNichols called um, uh, My First Film uh, from multi multidisciplinary artist Zia Anger. She does uh, a live computer based live commentary over a first film of hers, also called My First Film, that becomes achingly personal. Uh, to all the audience there. And that, that that's a full house, and I, I, I highly recommend seeking that out on uh, the final Friday of the festival, Friday, um, November uh, 12th, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and uh, then to close out our festival uh, and our immersive offerings, we have a digital piece that anybody can do from a computer at home called Return the Moon, and that is on Sunday night, uh, the final Sunday of our festival on November 14th. Uh, and that is from Third Rail Projects, who came to Denver with their piece, Sweet and Lucky. They're a world-renowned immersive company. And this is their first experiment with Zoom. Uh, and it is a beautiful piece uh, uh, for a large audience as well. So you can sign up for that um, on our website as well. And both of those will be among the most unusual and rewarding experiences you could have at the festival this year. It truly sounds like it. And look, this industry is constantly evolving. Might as well jump on and learn the latest that's out there. Well, thank you so much, Landon, for 
being with us today. And I'm going to give everyone some info on what they need to do next. Excellent. Thank you so much. And the Denver Film Festival is back with 233 features, short films and more. It's happening through November the 14th with the full slate of in-person screenings, red carpet events, special presentations and more. Get your tickets at denverfilm.org.